We're with a herd of elephants, everybody, and they're just getting quite close to us. So we're going to be nice and quiet and just enjoy their presence. This is wonderful stuff. <laughs> this little thing eating next to us. Slightly larger one coming down the road. But not a big one. We are just saying hello to each other. Very close now, about who? Three or four feet. Very special. <laughs> and they're so relaxed. Now, of course, well, relatively relaxed. The temptation, of course, in a situation like this is to just focus on the animal right here in front of you. But it's very important you keep an eye on what's going on everywhere else, too. the whole herd just moving gently past us. And this one, I suspect, is a young bull who was certainly playing a sort of mentorship role there, I think, with the little one. And then decided to stay and have a conversation with us. Hello. He's very cool. Oh, what do you think that is? Tuscoon, maybe? A Tuscoon, yeah, a little fight. No, you said see rogue elephants. Manu, we... I mean, uh, uh, well, okay, so let's just dis define what a rogue elephant is. A rogue elephant, Manu, would be an elephant that has displayed sort of abnormal or less than socially acceptable behavior and one that might uh, chase people. Uh, so rogue, I mean, the term rogue elephant is perhaps not the best because it sort of, um, it indicates that there is some kind of defining characteristic that makes an animal a rogue animal or a rogue elephant. But the, I guess by the sort of narrowest definition of the term an elephant that by default will chase people I look it's you it's possible we can come across one but it's very un I mean we don't come across them very often at all I suppose the closest we could get to was that elephant that gave us a bit of trouble a while back the one that Taylor calls Daryl he's got a sort of bell shape cut out of his ear and he may be described as a semi rogue if you like he has spent a bit of time touching vehicles, which is not ideal. But no, uh, Manu, I'm going to say no, we don't come across rogue elephant or any kind of rogue animal very often. I know that pole is a pain, everyone, but I can't move the car right now because he's so close to us. He's being so very kindly confiding that I really don't want to give him a fright by starting the vehicle. And William, you say, do I think he's feeding near us on purpose? The more and more time I spend with these animals, the more convinced I am that that's exactly what they're doing. I've got no doubt in my mind that he is wanting to spend time with us because I think he's bored. I think they enjoy having conversations with human beings. I just think it's fantastic. <laughs> He's so close to us now. And he's not vaguely irritated by the sound of my voice. 
And the reason I'm not worried is because he's a youngster. He's not a big bull, and he's also not showing any signs of genuine irritation. He's very calm. Just feeding quietly. And elephants, if you've had time with them, they will always demonstrate to you, they will give you some kind of indication as to whether or not they're happy. Now he's thinking about whether he should come even closer now. He keeps twisting his trunk towards us to have a bit of a smell. And I think he's almost tempted to put his trunk onto the vehicle and just see what it smells like or what it feels like. Now we, are, we don't want to encourage that sort of thing because it can become a problem a little bit later on when they get a little bit too comfortable and you want them to just have a slight wariness of you because of course they are so much bigger and stronger than us that we don't want them to be you know on, on a bad day, on a day they feel irritated when they would normally take their frustrations out on a tree um, we don't want them to take their frustrations out on us so we don't want to encourage them to touch the vehicles ever that's a very interesting one Justin you say what is my worst experience with an elephant I'm trying to think about bad experiences with elephants I, you know what I don't have one that leaps to mind there have been a few times certainly in the early part of my guiding career when the elephants were just not nearly as comfortable as they are with us here. And they, there was a cow where I used to work up at Ngala who would just see a vehicle and come running at it. And I remember once we were driving along the road and the tracker I used to work with, who was the most calm, calm individual, just suddenly went pale, which is difficult for a Shangan to do. And he said, drive, 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 drive. And I couldn't see anything and I, he looked to his right and then so I looked to my right and this elephant was barreling out of the bush at us. I, we hadn't seen her and she was about 10 meters away when I finally geared down and we started to pull away from her. So that was a very unpleasant experience. But you know, by and large, I really haven't had bad elephant experiences at all. That was just very, very special. Have you? Did you enjoy that? Mm -hmm. Yes.